Welcome back. Let's start with this example. We have that if the inflation rate for the coming year is an effective annual rate of 8%, what would be the real rate of interest given that the effective annual interest rate is 9%? Okay, so remember that in order to calculate the real rate of interest for a particular scenario, you need to know the following formula. The real rate of interest is equal to the interest rate minus the inflation rate divided by one plus the inflation rate. And so in this case, let's identify our interest rate and identify our inflation rate. And so we're told that the inflation rate for the coming year is an effective annual rate of 8%, and so that means that R is equal to 0.08, right? That is 8% in decimal form. And then we are told that the effective annual interest rate is 9%. And so that means that I is equal to 0.09, right? That is 9% in decimal form. And so if we plug these two values into this formula, we will have that the real rate of interest is equal to 0.09 minus 0.08 divided by one plus 0.08 and that will be equal to 0.01, right? 0.09 minus 0.08 is 0.01, and that will be divided by one plus 0.08, which is 1.08, okay? And so then if you plug this in your calculator, 0.01 divided by 1.08, you will find that the real rate of interest will be equal to 0.00926 and some more decimals. And so we will have that the real rate of interest is equal to 0.00926 nine two six percent right that will be the real rate of interest for this scenario all right so for our next example we have that riley has two hundred dollars in an account with an effective annual interest rate of ten percent at the end of the year riley wants to use his account to purchase a new camera that currently costs two hundred dollars if the predicted inflation rate for the upcoming year is five percent will riley be able to afford the camera with the money in his account at that time what is his real rate of interest? Okay, so we have two different questions here. The first one is asking us if Riley can afford a camera after one year of inflation, and then what would be his real rate of interest for that time period? Okay, so let's write down everything we know. We know that Riley has $200 in an account, and so we know that his investment is $200, and he has that $200 in an account with an effective annual interest rate of 10%. And so that means that I will be equal to 0 0.10, or you could just have 0.1, either way, that is still 10% in decimal form. Okay, but then the problem tells us that Riley wants to purchase a new camera at the end of the year that currently costs $200. Okay, and so the current cost of that camera is $200. All right, but the predicted inflation rate for the upcoming year is 5%. And so we'll label that with R, right, the inflation rate is equal to 0.05, which is 5% in decimal form. Okay, and so then using all this information, we want to answer the first question, which asks us that given that inflation rate, will Riley be able to afford the camera with that money in his account at that time, right, one year in the future? Okay, and so in order to answer that question, we will need to first accumulate the interest on his investment for one year and adjust the cost of the camera to account for the inflation of that one year period. Okay, and so let's start with accumulating the interest on his account. We will have that the future value of his investment in one year will be equal to that $200 times the accumulation factor of one plus the interest rate of 0.1 to the power of one for one year, and that will be equal to 200 times 1.1, which is equal to 220. Okay, so after one year, his investment increases from $200 to $220, given that 10% interest rate. Okay, but then let's adjust the cost of the camera using that inflation rate, right? Because of inflation, the cost of the camera is going to increase for that one year period. And so we will have that the end of year cost of the camera due to inflation is equal to 200 times one plus the inflation rate of 0.05. Right, and so we're multiplying 200 by 1.05, which is equal to $210. All right, and so at the end of one year, the camera that used to cost $200 now costs $210 because of inflation, which was 5% for that year. Now compare that 
to Riley's investment, which started out at $200 for the beginning of the year, but now at the end of the year is $220. And so if you compare that $220 to the new cost of the camera at the end of the year, we can see that Riley will have enough money to afford the camera at that time, right? He has $220, the camera costs $210, and so he can purchase that camera with $10 left over. Right, and so you would say that in this scenario, Riley's purchasing power increased by $10. Before, he had an investment that was the same amount as the cost of the camera, but now one year later, his investment is $10 more than the cost of the camera. Okay, and so we answered the first question to this problem. We now see that Riley can afford the camera, but then we wanna calculate his real rate of interest. And there's actually two different ways that we could do this. We could use the formula that we used in the previous example, or we could take a little shortcut by taking that $10 that his purchasing power increased by and dividing it by the year-end cost of the item. And I'll show you both ways. I'll show you that you get the same answer either way. But let's start with the quick way. We'll have that the real rate of interest is equal to the $10 that his purchasing power increased by divided by the year-end cost of the camera which is $210. And so if you divide 10 by 210, you will find that the real rate of interest is equal to 0 0.0476, which is 4.76%, okay? So that real rate of interest is telling us that Riley's purchasing power increased by 4.76%. Whatever he used to be able to buy at the beginning of the year, he can now buy something that is worth 4.76% more because that is how much his purchasing power increased by. All right, and so that's the real rate of interest, but the other way that you could find that is just by using that formula that the real rate of interest is equal to I minus R divided by one plus R. And so in this case, that means that this would be equal to 0.1 minus 0 0.05 divided by 1.05. And so that would be equal to 0 0.05 divided by 1.05 and so if you plug this in your calculator and divide 0 0.05 by 1.05, you will get the same value of 0 0.0476, which is also 4.76%. And so that is Riley's real rate of interest in this scenario. All right, so for our final example, we have that Joan has an investment fund with an effective annual interest rate of 7%. After a year of inflation, Joan is informed that her real rate of interest was negative 3.6%. What was the inflation rate? Okay, so we're told a couple things in this problem. We're told that Joan has an investment fund with an effective annual interest rate of 7% and that her real rate of interest was negative 3.6%. That means that her purchasing power decreased by 3.6%. Okay, so we know that I is equal to 0 0.07, right? That's 7%. And then her real rate of interest is equal to negative 0 0.036. And so in order to find the inflation rate for this scenario, we just have to use the formula for the real rate of interest and solve for the value of R, right? So the real rate of interest is equal to I minus R divided by one plus R, okay? And so we can plug in I and the real rate of interest into this formula, and then we can solve for the inflation rate, which is R. And so we'll have that negative 0 0.036 is equal to 0 0.07 minus r divided by one plus r. All right, and so then the first thing that I will do here is multiply both sides of the equation by one plus r, and so we'll have that negative 0 0.036 times one plus r is equal to 0 0.07 minus r, right? We multiplied both sides by one plus r, and so it cancels out with this one plus r, and so we just have the numerator left over, and we have the real rate of interest multiplied by that quantity. And so if we distribute that through that quantity, we will have negative 0 0.036 times one, which is just negative 0 0.036, and then we will multiply negative 0 0.036 by r, and have minus 0 0.036 times r, and that will be equal to 0 0.07 minus r. Okay, and so then if we clean up our work here, we can continue on with solving for r in this equation by combining our like terms. And so in this case, I'm going to add 0 0.036 to both sides of the equation to combine that with the constant of 0 0.07. And we'll have negative 0 0.036 times r is equal to positive 0 0.106 minus r, right? 0 0.07 plus 0 0.036 is 0 0.106. 
Okay, and then if we add r to both sides of the equation, that will combine with this term with r in it. And so if we add r to both sides, we will have 0.964 times r is equal to 0.106. All right, and so then there's only one step left. We just have to divide both sides by 0.964, and that will solve for r, the inflation rate for this scenario. And so r will be equal to 0.106 divided by 0.964. And if you plug that into your calculator, you will find that r is equal to 0.1099, which if we round that up, that is basically going to be 0.11. And so we'd have 0.11, which is 11%. And so we can say that the rate of inflation is equal to 11%, right? That will be Jones inflation rate for this scenario. Okay, and so with that, that was the last example for this video. And so if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments below. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.